Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Jedi Talk. I'm your host, Brad Hughes, and I'm not joined by Evan today. He is, I'm sure, recovering. Yesterday was his girlfriend's birthday, and they went to Oga's, and she turned 21, and I'm sure they're both somewhere nursing a hangover as we speak. Um, so I called in the bat signal. I threw it out there, and guess who answered the call? Uh, the former co-host of Jedi Talk and current co-host of... Your host of the Movie News Network podcast, Alex Newman. What's up, buddy? Not much. Thanks for having me. Of course, man. Anytime, dude. So, uh, how you be. been? <laughs> good, good. Lot to, lot's happened. <laughs> a lot as has you happened. To, as it, a lot has happened, but also a lot of nothing to everyone. So a lot, lot, of, lot of sitting around. A lot of Netflix binging. Yep, yep. What's the one sort of show... Twitter. What's the one show you like came out of quarantine and were like, yo, that show's awesome that you wouldn't have gotten to if Queens. you didn't have time? Queens, Queens Gambit. Gotcha. Okay. Queens Gambit. I haven't gotten Such to that one yet. Such a banger. I need to watch it. I need to watch it. So good. Mine oh, was no, two. No, no, two. So Queens Gambit and Ted Lasso. What is Ted Lasso? I've never heard of it. So it's, it's an Apple TV Plus original. It's from Bill Lawrence, the creator of Scrubs. That's why I watched it. It's Jason... Sadukas, Sadekas, you know the guy from Where the Millers, Sadekas, um, and he plays. It's like an American English show. He plays an a football coach that like gets hired for one of the English Premier League soccer football teams. So he flies to the UK and has is like coaching their team, even though he's not, he knows nothing about soccer. And it's like ten episodes, thirty minutes each. I binged it all in one night. It's hilarious, it, and it's the most like hilariously wholesome show you'll ever watch. Like, you feel so good about your life and these characters. Oh, okay. I'll have to check it out. I think I have Apple Apple TV or Apple Plus, whatever it's called. I have that. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. Mine was it. True Detective. Anyway, what's yours? True Detective Season 1. Bro. Oh, okay. I always wanted to watch that. Dude, get on it. It's ridiculous. It is such a good, such a good show. I, I, we started watching Season 2. I could already tell it's not even remotely similar to... The quality level. Uh, that's what I heard. So season one is Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrison. Yes. And dude, it it's one of those yeah. ones where and it's then, like the first two episodes. I always hate when people say this because it's like, then I don't want to watch it. But like the first two episodes are kind of slow, but they're really just kind of setting. It, it doesn't set the tone of, of how the whole thing pans out, but they're just kind of like laying some groundwork, with like character groundwork. And by I think it's episode three or four. It just goes into this direction. You're just like, oh my god! And there, there's a scene that I, I want to go back and watch because I only watched it once in the moment. But I'm pretty sure it's like a 15 minute one shot. Yeah. Oh, I love a good one shot. I do too. And it, I, I want to go back and rewatch it because, I, like I said, I, I was just watching it as we were watching the show, so I didn't really have time to like take it in because it was just it's such an intense moment. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it's like a 10 minute one shot. Like it's. It's wild, but if you Ooh, okay. you gotta watch it, it's so good. It's on. Uh, I forget if it's Showtime or HBO, but it's one of those. I think it's Showtime. I think it, I think it was a HBO original. Or HBO, wasn't it? HBO, HBO. HBO. Uh, you might be right. It's, yeah, it's one so of those HBO two. Yeah, HBO Max, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it's yeah. HBO. It's 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 <sighs> unbelievable. So you gotta check it out. Um, so much good content out there. So much, dude. It's it's and so much free time to watch it. Like usually, I miss out on a bunch of stuff because I don't <laughs> yeah. have time to do anything, but. Uh, I still don't, but I, I haven't watched TV probably in the last two weeks. But I've, I've just been reading. Um, that's been my thing lately. I've just yeah, been same. D- diving into the higher public stuff. I've finished. Oh, I finished Light of the Jedi and Into the Dark, and I'm about a third of the way through nice. um, the t- A Test of Courage, which is like a younger a Test of Courage. Yeah, yeah. Y- younger book, but still good. Yeah, still yeah, good. Just, just, just in Ireland. Yeah, yeah, still, still a solid story. It's actually darker than I thought it would be for a kid's book. Yeah, it's okay, uh, cool. I've you... got them on order, so I, I'm reading into the, I'm reading um, Light of the Jedi at the moment, about halfway through, and then I got the other two on the way. Um, yeah, I, I wanted to read them faster when they first came out, but like I was in Australia and it was all, it was all over the place. That's a, that's how it goes, man. You're a jet setting adventurer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, now back, your... back in London lockdown now. Back. Oh God, yeah. that's gotta be that's gotta be fun. Um, what oh, are yeah. your What are your initial thoughts of Light of the Jedi? I know you're not all the way through it yet, but what do you What do you think? I'm really really enjoying it. I know from other people, like I am, um, you know, like I work for Star Wars Newsnet as well, so obviously I'm always chatting to people about it. And I know a lot of those guys were like, 
it's good, but it's a very packed. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of characters, and I'm enjoying the short chapters at the moment. Like I'm really, I'm, a, I love a good short chapter. I Me hate too. being like starting a chapter and being like, I'm gonna be. This is a hundred pages long. <laughs> I love it when I can like see. It sounds so bad, but I like that I can just be like. I can pick it up for a chapter. No, no it's going to be a 10 minute read, put it down. And then I'll do that like 10 times a day. No, I exactly. Just, I'll, I read so much faster when I can just like quickly, quickly read chapters. Um, I'm with you on and that. I'm by really the way. enjoying that. But I'm imagining that that theme continues through the whole thing. And I know a lot of people have said that it's good, but it's not like absolutely like next level phenomenal. I do think you agree it, with that? I think it's really, really good. I don't think, I think Into the Dark was a better book. Um, but Charles Soul, I yeah. mean, he kind of had to start this whole thing off, right? He's laying what the higher public is, what the stakes are. Um, the only problem I had with Light of the Jedi was it feels like two books. It feels like yeah. you have the the Great Disaster. I don't know where you're at, and then I'm not, I'm not going to ruin it for you. But you have that, and then there's I like a been. very definite switch in feel of it where it's like this first part of it's very fast paced and then it kind of slows down a little bit and then it kind of meanders towards the end and then it just kind of wraps up um yeah into the dark's a better book for me i just like claudia gray's writing style better and i think she's the star wars goat yeah i think she's been the most consistent um, the only book that I don't love yeah, from everything her, she's written has been fantastic. The only thing I don't love, love, like obsessed with is Master and Apprentice. Um, okay. which I thought yeah. was, I, I thought was good, I, but yeah. not great. I really, really like Master and Apprentice, but I don't love it. Yeah. I, I'm with you. I don't have it anything. Is... I don't have anything. Yeah. I don't have anything against it. I really didn't. I just, I read it and was like, nice. Yeah. Solid. Cool. It's a consistent addition to the. It's a great addition to the canon. Yeah. But it like where, but whereas Bloodline was like, woo. Bloodline. Bloodline just like I don't know. Bloodline, Bloodline just slaps. It just mixed so many <laughs> elements. In. Yeah. Bloodline slaps. <laughs> Bloodline slaps. That one, and I think Leia, Princess of Alderaan, might be my favorite Star Wars book. Did you ever read that one? Uh oh. You did. I did. I love that one. Yeah. It's, um, it's so good. It's a great. She's she's just got great characterization. Are you there? Uh oh, we didn't have this problem. For, we talked for an hour on the phone before this podcast started. We didn't have this problem at all. Of course, now we're recording. We're having issues. Are you there? You completely it completely cut you out. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, you you got you cut out there. I was like, oh no. Um, you said yeah, she no, has no. consistently yeah, your, your face has is frozen. character. Yeah, yours was too. But at least you look. She, you she's look consistently better. got good. She's got great characterization. Like she really understands Leia. Yep, I agree. I liked the addition of crate in that book, like tying that into Last Jedi, because it was a for, uh, the road to Last Jedi novel. Um, yeah, just little stuff like that. She, she does. So, she peppers in little stuff like that where you're like, "Oh, that's interesting," yeah. and it doesn't well, feel yeah. out of place. Did you say, yeah, the Holdo, the Holdo edition was yep. nice. All that, that was kind good of stuff too. Like said. Now talking of talking of ro- road to the um, road to the whatever film books, did you? We we both read Force Collector. We know that we love it. Yes. Did you read Ra- what's it called? Rise of the I've totally forgotten. It's called Rebellion. Rise of the Rebellion. Uh, Rebellion Resist- Rises. Resistance Reborn. Rebecca. Resistance Reborn. Resistance Reborn. The Rebecca. Roan Horse. Something book. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, I that was that's a book that doesn't get talked about a lot, and I actually really really loved it. Thank you, dude. I had I, Evan hated that book. <laughs> I don't Evan know. Hates random things, he, dude. He hates random <laughs> stuff for no reason. Then he'll, but like I love him because like he'll. We still love him. We still love him. Of course, he's he's a great dude. But like like he'll just hate stuff, and I'm like, I get what you're saying, but like you can ignore all these things about this thing that you love, but <laughs> yeah. but you hold this thing like feet to the fire. I don't know. It's I that book is fantastic. It felt like you're reading a movie script. Yeah. Oh, and it was it was like debatably like how you want to play it it's more in canon more con- connective tissue than rise of skywalker for debatably sure better than the rise of skywalker depending I, I, on how you want to whether you want to whether we want to get into that sequel game i don't know if we do of course but it was we like can. 
it is the best Road to book that they they had done. Even with all the good stuff they did to lead up to to Force Awakens and Last Jedi, this was the best one. The amount of connective tissue and the the, the storyline was so interesting that it is almost a crime that the Rise of Skywalker pays so little attention to it. Yep. In that book, you've got we've got. All the people from Aftermath. So we've got the continuation of um, Wedge Antilles and Nora being a couple and being together. We get good characterization of them being like wanting to go back and living a quiet life, but being okay with going back into the fray. We get Snap Wexley and more expansion on him after we've seen him in the Poe Dameron comics. And then he's there with his wife. And so they're not just continuing Aftermath, but also the Poe Dameron comics. We also get characters from Battlefront 2 leading up to all of the um ex- uh, all of the like dlcs as well like it deals with um item versio's daughter um and their juros friend the blue guy who i can't remember his name uh it's gonna kill me starts with the song yeah. With m yeah but you oh, know what God. i mean yeah I know what you're talking about. he's in the, he's in the so game so much he's in the game yeah he's in the game and then he's continued this there's so much mixing and, and they add stuff in and stuff happens and the the reasoning behind like why people join the first order it was so good and it's such a shame that none of it gets any um time in rise of skywalker yeah man that book is uh i always talk about that's that's like a hidden gem no one no one i don't even know Mm -hmm. anyone other than you who's read it and you and evan who have read it and I, i remember reading that book just being like holy crap this book is awesome and, yeah. I, and I remember telling Evan, like, was, you're, you're going to yeah. love this. And then he didn't. And I was like, I don't know if I can trust your opinion anymore, man. Like, that's uh, yeah, it's such it's a, like, good, it's such a good book. It's such a good <laughs> book. Um, yeah. did you, did you, Especially for fans because there's yeah. so much so much. There's so there. much. And then the term fan service gets thrown around a lot. But there is that. But it it works. It was, and it wasn't fan service. It was the people you'd expect to be in the resistance being in the resistance. That's true. Oh, that's true. We actually got we got we got connective tissue to um, uh, Bloodline as well, didn't we? The Twi'lek, that because they got a Ryloth, and we get yeah. the Twi'lek that Leia met in Bloodline. Yep. Um, yeah, I forgot about that. that plot thread as well. So yeah, like there was so much there. So much. It's such a good book. Um, yeah. I was gonna. Oh, did you listen to our interview when we had Kevin Shinnick on the podcast? I did. Yeah. How wild is that, that that he? So how wild good. is that that he wrote episode nine? <laughs> like, to the point. Did you do you remember that part? So basically, like, no, he, I not, don't even not, remember not, that. Not, not that he wrote yeah, well. it, but like he turned in his first draft of Force Collector, and they rejected it, and they were like, "Yeah, we you kind of wrote the story of episode nine, so can you change some stuff?" Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh my god. And he god. was like, Oh, See, I guess well now I know what the movie's gonna be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What do I uh, need to change? Um which again, Force Collector was another like absolute love letter for for the fans. So much connective tissue. Um that's uh, there's so many threads at the moment that I'm like, I'm so excited. These are definitely stuff that's gonna get picked up in the future and I'm so interested to see where. Um Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. There's so much. There's so much good Star yeah. Wars stuff out right now. I was. I think you know. I wasn't like super high on the higher public. I remember seeing like the. No, you were very. I remember you saying it looks like concept art. It does. It looked like fan art. It looks like fan art. Fan art. It looked like fan art, and I stand by it. But I and I, I was always like maybe you know I'll I'll come around to it once it starts coming out, and I have. I'm I'm like, I'm really into it, but. I, yeah. I just kind of wonder how long they're going to do... Like, is there is this like an indefinite thing, or is is there like an end to this? You know more so about this since you write for Star Wars Newsnet. Uh, StarWarsNewsnet.com. Yeah, they've got it in rounds. So we've had round, we've had round one. That's all out. Uh, yeah, other than the monthly comics. Now, round two, I think, starts in a couple of months when we get... Um, Kevin Scott is kicking it off with his... with He's doing the next... So whereas, like, the Jedi was the the sort of flagship first adult novel, the next round is going to be something, I think, about a storm, and that's going to be Kevin Scott's doing the novel. But then everyone else is then doing other stuff. The Great Storm, um, is that what it's called? That was called. Cool. Let, um, let me look it up. Into the it's like loads of stuff they've got sort of... Uh, yeah, they've got like a really good... I think they're going to do round two, and I think they've actually got it planned. I think they released some sort of like small chart. I think we're probably going to get content way into the next few years. I think there'll be at least three or four 
maybe more rounds. I'm the done. Rising Storm. The Rising Storm. That's what it is. Rising yeah, Storm. by Kevin Scott. That's July this year. And, and that it's... is, it's um, not a direct sequel to Light of the Jedi, but it is like adding to it. And I think that's like, the next, Okay. that's the start of the next step. I'm way more interested in stuff than what happened. Well, I loved Avar Chris. I think she's a great character. Um, she's a great character. I, I loved her. And I, I wanted the more way... of her. I wanted more of her in that book. There's not a ton of her in it. Um, yeah, but I, I, I really like, like the way they, um, the way they've, um, no, nope, I've totally forgot. You go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just more interested I in absolutely the... brain fart. <laughs> That's okay. I, I'm more interested in the characters and stuff that happens with what happened in Into the Dark, because those characters were like, like Master Comac. I'm fascinated by you. You haven't read any of the stuff from that book yet, but that's the next one you need to read. I'm telling you, you're going to love it. Um, of which one? Sorry. Into the dark. Yeah. Yeah. That's on, that's on the list next. That's, yeah. that's the ne- by for sure. The next one you need to read. Uh, they reference, yeah. Okay. Uh, the main character of Into the dark wreath Silas in light of the Jedi. And then something uh-huh. happens and you like it towards the end of the book. Um, they just kind of reference him going to starlight beacon. That's, that's not a spoiler, but, uh, then see now you gave me a brain fart. What was I talking about? Oh, uh, into the dark. But there's there's certain characters that like like Wreath and Master Comac. Him in particular, he is the character that I am the most fascinated by, because there are these Jedi called Wayseekers. I'm sure you've heard of this by now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'm yeah. wondering if that's what's going to happen with this character, and if we can actually see. A Jedi go from Jedi on the Council to a Wayseeker. I want to see what that process is. Um, yeah. There's just little stuff like that that I'm interested in. Have you gotten yeah. to the I part? Like that Sorry, real quick. Have you gotten to the part in the la- no, in uh, Light of the Dark where it references something from the Force Awakens? No, not yet. Okay. Um, I, at the moment, they're like still like all on their individual missions, are like dealing with the chaos as the anomaly arrived, and they've just realized that the anomaly that's going to the sun is full of Tabana gas. Gotcha. Okay. So, yeah, I've been really bad. I'm like, I'm like, I'm reading like I've now this week I've got into the binge mode, and I'm reading like hundred <laughs> pages a day. Nice. So I will be like done within like the month, and I've got this, and then I've got um, uh, Victory's Price, so the final. Uh, the Alphabet Squadron books that's lined up next, and then I'm finish it. Then I'm going to smash out High High uh, Republic. I can't get through Alphabet Squadron. I've Alphabet tried Squadron three is times. so interesting because you're on the first one. Yep. It took me. I'm I'm not a quick reader, but it took me like two three months to read the second one slowly. I people love Alexander Freed. I think he's an amazing writer, an amazing person. We saw him at the we saw him at the panel when we were at Celebration. We Seems talked like to a really him. good dude. Um, uh, we did, we did actually. I've forgotten that. Um, he his writing is very, very clinical. Is that the right word to put it? Yeah. Other people love it. The Confusing. war story vibe. I find it. I don't find it very easy to read. No, they're I, hard. I don't. It, it, I was trying to explain this on the They're podcast. Very like you'll, adult you'll, novels. Yes, I was trying to explain this on the podcast, and it's like you'll read a you'll read a sentence, and at the very end of the sentence, it'll be like, "But that happened 14 years ago," and you're like, "Wait a second, like I, I, that's not a good example." But like, there's just like you'll you'll read, and then like you'll realize what you're reading has nothing to do with what is being talked about, and so like your brain completely shifts focus. I don't know. I I cannot. Yeah, I yeah. can't. I can't keep I track it. of of where we are in the book. I, I, yeah, but I do like it though. It is really good, and the, the characters are really cool. I do have a couple of issues with the fact that it's called Alphabet Squadron, and they've barely been a squadron. And from the looks of how the third book's going, they're not going to be. <laughs> um, and that's not that that's a bad thing, but I kind of like, yeah, I'm still enjoying it, and I'm, I, I think he might actually be better as an audio book. I was I just about to, to say I might try to do it as an audio book. Yeah, because what did I, his, I listened to the Battlefront Twilight. Company Squadron, but Twilight Company. Oh, damn it, I almost said Company. Um, <laughs> I listened to Twilight. I listened to Twilight Company on an audiobook years ago while I was driving, and I loved it. I like absolutely went straight through it. And I think that his writing probably suits an audiobook better if you're not a big, big reader who can just like smash out a hundred pages like really quickly. Yeah, I I just love audiobooks in but general because yeah. you can do them while you're driving. You yeah. can do they're they're. But the problem is like. I've I have ADD. I don't know if anyone notices that. Of course they do. They've seen the show. They know I'm an idiot. 
but I have the ADD bad, and like I'll start just daydreaming. Like I remember very vividly, I was driving oh. home from North Carolina, finishing the Black Spire audiobook, and I just started like daydreaming. And I had to go back thirty minutes because I zoned out that long. <laughs> that's why I, I, see that's why i can't do audiobooks unless i'm driving or maybe walking i need to be doing something otherwise like if i'm on, if i'm just sitting at home with an audiobook i can't concentrate <laughs> um but i also have that problem when i, I you know i think i might I, I, it's the classic you know 2021 thing is that everyone thinks they've got add but i do i think i do <laughs> i know, you know I like do. i i like i'll read a book and i'll and maybe because i love star wars so much i'll like finish off a I'll get like halfway through a chapter and then daydream as into what I want the chapter to be or as in how much I love Star Wars and I'll just like chew, I'll just go off into the distance and start thinking about Star Wars points I'd be talking about if I was on this imaginary podcast <laughs> while reading the book. I think of everything. I'll be like... That's why I'll it takes me so long to read them. <laughs> I'll be reading a book. I'll get all the way to the end of the page and then I'm like, I'll be thinking of like, you know, I'm really hungry. Like, I wonder what time Chipotle closes. You know, I bet you, I bet you, there, I bet you, I know that uh, so and so is working today. I wonder if like, if they've done the steak right. Like, like I literally get to that level, and then, I, then I'm, I'm down the entire book, and then like a word will snap me out of it, and I'm like, wait a second, what? And I have to go all the way back to the top of the page and reread it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I, I'll get I'll reread sentences like five times, being like, "You're just reading words. What does it actually mean, Alex? Like, take it in." Uh, are you excited about the new Thrawn novel? You know, we're supposed to enjoy Star Wars, right? You know, we're supposed to enjoy doing this. Yeah, Making right? it sound like an absolute chore. I know. We're like, we Ugh. love these books. Getting, but it's such a yeah. disaster trying to read them all. Such yeah, I can't believe I have to read so many books. You don't have to do anything. Um, but it, we are getting such good. We are getting such good content. No, like there is like I think in the next two years. We are, I know obviously the sequels were a little bit of a like, ah, uh, trip over, but I think we really are entering a golden age of, of Star Wars. Like, I think the High Republic is firing all cylinders on a publication kind of way. Um, we're getting a crossover for the comics coming up with War of the Bounty Hunters, which is going to be really interesting. We're going to get some actually good writing on what Boba Fett did be between episode five and six. Can't wait. We're going to get that gap filled. Can't wait for that. They're in Juros is coming back. Yes, I Can saw that. That's so exciting. Juros? No, not Juros. Durog. Durog, you're right. I've forgotten his name. Durog. Durog, yeah. Durog, you're right. Um, from the Clone Wars, like, I couldn't believe, like, he's going to be in an Afro comic book, and he's yeah. on the cover, and I was like, I can't believe they're bringing him back. I'm right. so glad, because, like, I love I love it when, they, when we do these little references, but he's definitely being nerfed. There's no way he's having the power he had in the 2003, um, no. you know, what is his name, Jen and Travosky. Which is Clone coming Wars to Disney series. Plus, by the way, which is exciting. Which come to Disney as well, That's yeah. But he is OP in that. Like he's, um, he's like, you know, he's like he self heals, doesn't he? Like yeah. Obi Wan like mm -hmm. stabs him, and he you see like his circuits and flesh kind of like come together. I remember being confused when that came out, and I was I was like a kid at the time, like I was probably like eleven, I think, and I remember being really confused as to is that Grievous? Is that how they're doing Grievous right. in this animated show? Like, <laughs> they look so, so similar, similar yeah. that it took me so long to work out that it wasn't Grievous. Yeah, I don't know too much about the character. I know that he like doesn't like Mandalorians. Um, I watched a little bit of that show when it came out, but not a lot of it. So when I go back and watch it, I'm gonna be watching 95 percent of it for the first time. Um, really? Yeah, oh, I I you, never, you'll smash it out really fast. I can't wait. Like, it's not it's not particularly long. Dirk. His name's Dirk. Oh, Dirk. Totally forgot that. Yeah. I thought it was Durog. I thought, I thought Durg. you were right. Um, no, it's D U R G E. Dirk. Uh, but I think he's going to be nerfed to a pretty standard, not standard, I think he's going to be just like a power, powerful bounty hunter. Um, and we're getting him between five and six. So we're getting him in a, in a weird time comparative to how we've seen him before as yeah, like right? a, sort of like a separatist commander. I wonder how they're going to. Um, but think, I love that. Is, I love that. Are going to make him a bounty hunter? He is a bounty hunter. Oh, yeah, he is that's a how they list him okay. in the description for Afra. Yeah, gotcha. that's how they list it. You know, in the like in the trade description, like you know, they're obviously they can elaborate in the issue, but that's how they gotcha. sort of sort go, of painted it. Let's go back um, to Higher Public real quick. I you're the comic book guy for Star Wars Newsnet, which is exciting. Um, I don't know if you know how weird that is. Like when we were of, when we were doing the show together, you and me, when you were here, all of our news uh, has I, that's the only website I've ever gone to. So it's so wild to me that you write for <laughs> yeah. them now. It's it's. I'm very proud of you. It's awesome. Yeah, um, it's such a privilege. It's so cool, man. Like every time I log on, I see your name. I'm like, I know that guy. 
<laughs> um, I'm really digging the High Republic comics, man. They're really good. Yeah. They're really, yeah. really good. And there's so like, much fun. I yeah. think I think it's because it's a clean slate, and it doesn't feel as even though it's comic booky in the sense of like it's a comic book and there's like some things like the little fairy in the first issue that was kind of floating around. Um, I forget yeah. the name, but there's little things like that. But like the stories feel like actual Star Wars stories that you would, that you could get in a novel or in a TV show. It doesn't feel dumbed down for comics. No. And it doesn't feel um, weighted down by legacy either. Like yeah. you're not reading it being like, What's Leia saying? Would Luke say that? Would you know? Not that we probably shouldn't think those things as much as we do, but none of that weight is there. Um, I also think they have like the the main like the Marvel Star Wars High Republic has such good art style. It reminds me of like an image indie comic. It's like the Star Wars main run. The the, the art is fine, but a lot of the time, I think it's pretty like standard Marvel monthly release whereas this one has just a very unique style i love the indie feel to it it's a little bit cartoony but not in a bad way it like suits its medium gives it a kind of alternative feel um and yeah i'm really liking it i'm just absolutely loving it um uh, issue three just came out it's uh it's getting very very interesting i don't want to ruin it for anybody are you caught up to all three uh, I've just got to read three. I'm reading it today, actually. Okay. I've only read the first two. Um, but you can spoil it because I'll read it quickly. Something's up with Skier or, or Skier. I forget how to say his name. So, you know, I, it's, it, it, one, the old one armed Rand Ocean. Yeah, it, that's one of the things I like about the audiobooks is you actually get to hear how to say the names properly instead of just thinking how you say them. That's one thing I, do, one thing I do miss about the audiobooks. Um, but, uh, Skier, is it Skier or is that how you would say it? I think it's Skier. Skier? I suppose you'd say it like Skier. Skier. You know, if something's you were up with yeah, something's up with him. Uh, I think something. I don't remember if he's in. Because he's 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 in like the Jedi. I'm pretty sure he gets traumatized he is, yes. in that. That's how he loses his arm. I haven't got there yet, but like I think it's interesting the timeline they're doing in that the comic book starts after the events of the novel. Yeah, but you don't necessarily need to read them. They've got that sort of dual thing going of of the the um the great disaster mixed with the starlight beacon. So they've kind of got a lot of like threads going on, but I think that's necessary to setting they're going to the bring them together. I think they're going to like, yeah, they're setting up the universe. Like, you know, this part of the galaxy. And I know everyone's like, Oh, well, what about the old Republic? I'm like, look, we know we are like 90% sure that we will get a film there. Eventually it's yeah. going to happen. Like we know it. Um, at one point, everyone thought it would be the Johnson trilogy. Everyone's thought it's going to be the, um, the two guys, the, the, D and D from Game of Thrones. Someone will do it eventually, um, and yeah, we just got to wait for our for our time. I'm not one of those people. I'm excited for Old Republic, but I'm not like I'm people not, like you know every Star no. Wars thread on Reddit. There's always yeah. someone who's like, but what about Old Republic? It's like it's we got that. I mean, t- for me, it's like even though it's not canon anymore, I, I, I'm always like, let's keep moving forward. Like let's go for like let's keep telling stories. Like I would prefer. Instead of the High Republic, I would like to see something like seventy years after Episode Nine, because yeah. ultimately, even with High Republic, we we ultimately know how this ends. The Sith come back, so like yeah, that's one thing that's interesting about it into, helps. into the Dark. Yeah, and, because I don't want to I don't want to ruin that book because it's such a good book for you. But like, there's some stuff in there with the dark side, and you're like, well, we know it's not now, so. <laughs> You know, yeah. it, uh... Well, which is why I'm very interested for Star Wars Acolyte. Yes. Because that's got dark side vibes. 100%. The description is about the dark side, but it's set at the end of the High Republic. So, it, it, you know, that could be anywhere from, like, you know, just before Episode 1 to just for 100 years or whatever, however long the High Republic goes for. And it's just one of those things where I go, I'm interested in how much you can do considering that the Jedi can't be revealed to... that Sith can't be revealed to the Jedi. They get around it very well in um, the Darth Maul comic book where he fights in a, a Jedi apprentice. And the you know spoilers to that four or five-part series that was really good, he kills her. That's They get around it. <laughs> like, the, you know, she finds out that the Sith exist, but she, she gets killed Jeez. by the end of the series, so she doesn't get to tell any Jedi. Um, 
And so, yeah, it's one of those things where, like you said, it, it would be cool to move forward. I, I don't agree. I don't want them to just jump 90 years into the future because then one of the best things about Star Wars I love is that we're not – the MCU is amazing, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's always moving forward. We get new stuff. We get new stuff. One of the great things about Star Wars is the, like, the fact that we get to go back and – filling gaps and we get to talk we get to do stories about other things there's nothing wrong with getting you know filling in all those ob- that obi-wan detail you know which i'm so excited for in can't kenobi wait. but see that's why um, i like having that gap though because you can can't wait. you can tell anything so like that's why i to me the yeah. most, to me the most fascinating era in star wars is from six to seven that has always been the one where i'm yeah. like there's there's so much that has to have happened between those two films because it's yeah. like such a big gap but I like big gaps because you can go in and you can go, okay, here's the Mandalorian. We're kind of inching closer to how the First Order gets to be in power. Um, yeah. Or I you suppose can go the only a year issue before, then is that if you don't, you know, Episode Seven, and you yeah. can tell me more about Ray. Like, there's so much you can do with it when you have a big gap of time. That's why I like big gaps of time because you can yeah. do because I do like all the yeah. supplemental stuff. Yeah, but the the only issue I think with doing the big gap thing is that then people do nothing for a while. That's you know, true. like you you know between three and four, Obi Wan. Okay, they're gonna get around that in the Kenobi series, but he can't do too much stuff. Otherwise, he's not watching Luke. Correct. You go between six and seven, like they still have like the you know the first order still have to come back. You know, the that celebration doesn't work. And one thing I'm hoping they correct when they do eventually go forward up with nine, and I think Rogue Squadron will be our first push post nine. Um, Wait, is that is that is after the, episode nine? Rogue Squadron's after episode nine. So the way it was described is, let me find out that description. The way it was described is that it's a new era in Star Wars, but it's like worded in a way. I'm going to find the official wording. Um, the way it's sort of worded is that it's going to be a new era, but not a new era for, like, Star Wars fans, a new era in the galaxy. Um, huh. I'm that's just, I'm so, so excited for that movie. Oh, yeah. It's going to be so good. I love Patty Jenkins as well. Um, and I love, you know, Rogue Squadron. Anyway, moving on. I'll find it and then I'll let you go. Okay. I'll find the actual description. But anyway, post nine content. I think this is a good chance for us to do something where we actually like again, like what they're doing with the TV shows with the Mandalorian is we can plan these crossovers. We can plan like we can build on the world, and we can go post nine. And bit by bit, they've got a chance to maybe create this world and move forward and do big things. without having to be about what had happened between six and seven and blah, blah, blah. And you also then get the idea that, oh, you know, Luke didn't get to rest and get his happy ending. And like, you know, like Han never got to blah, blah, blah. You know, you get these issues. Whereas if you are constantly, rather than waiting 30 years, if we are looking at Ray's challenges straight after episode nine, we, we're not annoyed by the fact that she didn't get to celebrate and relax. We're actually living the challenges with her. I like that. find it and send it to you later okay no problem um moving on from higher public talk because we could t- i could talk about higher public all day because it's really really fun have you oh yeah are you caught up on your tron book tron thron books or are you not a thron fan or yeah no i'm a thron fan i'm all caught up with thron um excited for the second one in the prequel trilogy which is cool um Did you i finish think timothy Cimency? zan is just buying time until I did, yeah. Okay. I think he's just buying time until he's allowed to write, like, post-six <laughs> Thrawn stuff. He seems to like it, though. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Timothy Zahn seems to love writing for Thrawn. Thrawn. And I'm always happy yeah. for him to come back and do it. I'm, I'm cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited seeing... Yeah, how did you... What did you think of Ascendancy? Did you like seeing sort I'm of, like, I'm 76 early, early pages days? in. I started it yesterday. I read about 70 pages yesterday. Okay, yeah. Um... I'm kind of bouncing back in between Test of Courage and that one because I need a break from High Republic. So I started reading Thrawn. Um, but he is just. Yeah, such, it is good. He's such a good writer, especially for Thrawn. Like, 
it's it's this is weird to say, but almost feels like that Thrawn is smarter than the writer because there's like stuff that he'll do, and you're just and not that he's not smart, but I'm just saying like Thrawn is such a genius character. It's got to be hard to write for somebody that smart. Oh yeah, and I think sometimes the only issue is that it's a little bit like Sherlock Holmesy, and yes. the, <laughs> rather than it rather than it being like, and and this isn't a bad thing. This is just a this is just how writing works. Sometimes you just have to accept this, but sometimes it's a little like Thrawn solves the problem because he's Thrawn, rather than you being like as a reader being like, oh my god, I totally didn't get these threads and and like connect them together, but Thrawn sees them. It's yeah. more that like Thrawn does stuff off book. You know what I mean? He's off yeah. screen, yeah. so to speak, off page, doing things. And then we're told later on, he noticed this stuff. And you're like, Oh, well, we didn't How? see that. Yeah, we didn't see that at all. So, yeah. So, cool, I yeah. guess. So, which is like, you know, <laughs> he's written, yeah, he's written to be smart, so smart, which isn't bad. Um, yeah. It, it's, it's hard to find that balance because I want him to win and I always want him to be smarter than his opponents because they, especially in this one, because they're all really underestimate him. But at the same time, you want him to be a realistic character. But yeah. it's like, it's hard to say. I, I find it interesting, even just the few pages that I'm in the book, like, they're kind of making him like a like a rogue kind of character. And he's kind of getting away with a lot of stuff. And, and yeah. I can't tell if it's just he, well, convenience it, or if they're recognizing how intelligent he is or if it's a combination of the two. <laughs> They do address that later in the book. They okay. do address that later in the book. The idea that the like what his like um, the myth like family, what they are, what their game is, why they sort of hate him. If like someone has a long term like the higher up in the myth family has a long term plan for him that the other families maybe don't like. Gotcha. Um, I think this is all just going to lead into him being an amazing sort of grand admiral or whatever they call him in the in the Chiss ascendancy. But then. I think that'll lead into the reason he's like either exiled or I can't remember if it was exiled or if he's fake exiled, whatever that leads him onto that planet where he gets picked up and becomes um, part of the empire. And I think, again, that's another, that's another nugget that I think is being the ground's been laid for later on is in that original Thrawn trilogy or the original Canon Thrawn trilogy. The, um, what are the antagonists called? I, the I, bad guys from Gris, the Grisk, the Grisk. Grisk yes, I think yes, it yes, is. that's right. How do you remember that? This Grisk? is why, this is why you're going to be no on. Uh, this is why you're going to be in the Schmodown, dude. We'll talk about that in a little bit. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, no. I, like I, I'm, I'm not like because they no! pick. They, and they pick them way in advance, don't they? Ugh. Yeah. No, no. I'm not being in it. Like because they, you know, what I mean, they, they have like a massive pool of people. I think just the writers were allowed to volunteer, so we were like, yeah, yeah, cool. But then I think they, I think like the people that do the podcast on for Star Wars Newsnet and that sort of get chosen and that kind of thing. So makes that's sense. A, that's like, upsetting. We'll get you on there. We'll get you on there. Yeah, I should, I should would, do it. I don't know. Would, I'm like, my really issue is good at I, it. See, my only thing is I'd love it to be um, wider canon. I'm not very good at very, very specific details within like the original trilogy. Yeah, I'm the same way. Like That the, stuff doesn't really interest me as much as in like, what color was this person's hat? I'm like... <laughs> Don't, don't, yeah, know. don't know. Like, you know, I'm very good with big character arcs and, like, you know, like lots of stuff. Um, but no, I think that, like, they've set that up. I think that Chiss Ascendancy, what's going on in the expanded regions, that has to be stuff that we address in the new TV shows. It has to be something we address in Rangers of the New Republic or in the crossover event or whatever, whatever iteration we see live action thrown in. That has to be one of the plot points. I was under the impression. It's too big not to address. I was thinking, like. So, you watched uh, you watched Mandalorian. I don't have to ask. Of course, you did. The episode where they infil oh, yeah. infiltrate the, um, the Imperial cloning facility. Did you think that was Snoke in the, in the, in the tube? I think it was. People say that like a couple of notes from from Snoke's tune play yes. when you see they, it, they, or it Palpatine's did. tune. I can't remember. It was Snoke's. Um, I think, yeah, I think it is. I think it. I think it. it I don't think that's a plot point. I don't think it's going to necessarily lead to anything because I think we're going to focus on Mandalore for a few seasons now. I think that's what the big crossover event's going to be. Um, but I think it's a good little hint, and I I, I think it's connective tissue. I don't know if Gideon's working directly for Snoke, but I imagine he's got links to the First Order. 
Because Th- Thrawn's... When we last see Thrawn in Rebels, that's the last time you see him canonically, he goes to the Unknown yeah. Regions. And doesn't this book... Yeeted into space by whales. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> um... This is what I mean. Like, everyone's like, oh, they're going to do a sequel series to Rebels in live action. I'm like, they are. If they do, they're going to have to be real subtle about how they explain things. Because right? otherwise, it's like, that's weird to explain in live action. Yeah, they were... There were whales that t- just don't worry, just don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> they're going to explain yeah. the way like just don't, they're yeah. lost. We're looking for them. Yeah, Deal with th- it. there it is. That's all it is. Uh, but I was under the impression, and I haven't finished the book yet, or you know, it's just the first of three. Does he go to the unknown regions in this first book? They cut out. Oh, they're in. He's in the unknown regions already, isn't he? Because this is all like their entire like galaxy is like, or their entire civilization oh, is yeah, outside duh, of what we know they're, from they're, the Republic. I keep forgetting that they're they're with the Chiss Ascendancy right now, and not he's not with the yeah. Empire yet. So the they're all yeah, they've got nothing to do with the Republic or That's the Empire right. or any of that. They are completely. You know, so we're actually like it's actually a really bigger deal than like people let it on. Actually, yeah. because the intro to that ascendancy book is what's it called? Um, Beyond a Galaxy Far yeah, Far Away is what it says far, far when you start the, the book. Yeah, it's on the back so, of the book too. On the back, yeah, on the back of the book. That was it. And so that's a big deal for them to be like, oh, there's like all these other civilizations out there that we just like haven't known about the yeah. entire time we've known Star Wars. I forgot that. Um, I wasn't thinking that they which that is, he was there. Yeah. Duh. So do you think that? Yeah. He, I just they they've they've tried to make like the unknown regions a thing, and like they just it's almost like they can't decide on what it is. Yeah, because they make it sound like it's like essentially like electrical storms, and you get fucked up if you even try and navigate them. But then on the other hand, we're now getting information that there's like whole other civilizations, like multiple species going on. We're essentially getting like do you know what it is? It's essentially like Pokemon. With Kyoto and the what is it, Kyoto <laughs> and the, the Giotto region, yeah. <laughs> you know, where essentially, yeah, where it's essentially like, you know, when you, I think it was like in one of the early ones, you'd finish the whole game and then you could go back to your hometown and if you'd gotten swim by then, you could swim across the lake and then there was a whole nother fucking like, you know, like game <laughs> to play in the other region, in the Johto regions. But it's almost like that, you know, we've got, we've, we've spent all this time in one galaxy and then they've gone, wait, there's more. But wait, there's more, yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. I, yeah. I'm hoping so, it leads to somewhere because I feel like the first Thrawn uh, trilogy didn't do much. It, it kind of just is there. It, it explored a little bit of Batu. It explored their relationship between him and Vader, which I thought was really interesting. Um, I don't actually don't think I finished. So it was was there were three books. There was the Thrawn one with him on the cover, like the like the white and blue. Then there was Alliances. Yeah. What was the third uh, book? Alliance is Treason. I don't think I finished Treason. No, I did. No, I did. Good. I did because uh, yeah. that character yeah. that everybody loved came back. Yeah. Um, I forget his name. Uh, Ivan. Ivan. Is that his name? He's, he, in the audio book, he's got a really southern, southern accent. accent. Which yeah, that guy. They make, it sound, they make it sound like he's from like a Texan farm. <laughs> um, he's from Space, Arkansas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. he actually is though, because his family own a farm, uh, own a shipping farm, and he's from like you know, like and that's why he can speak to Thrawn because he's from like butt fuck nowhere. Yeah, because he, he like learns the shipping language that, that they both speak. Hey there, so Thrawn, I'm ready to go out there, in. and we're going to go shoot some of the grisk. I did read that book. I forgot I read that book. I think I actually yeah. did that one. As shoot an some of them there. Some of them there womp rats. <laughs> hey, you want to go bullseye some womp rats in my T16 Thrawn? <laughs> Let's go do it, buddy. Woo! Let's do it. <laughs> Let's storm the space capital. Get my pickup speeder. <laughs> uh, okay, I forgot I did read that one. Have but you, I feel like those just didn't yeah. do much. You ever been to the watering hole at Masai's Lake? <laughs> I thought they didn't do much. It was just basically a way for him to... I could to do this like, all day. I know, I could too. Uh, I feel like it was just a way for them to write a Thrawn novel. Because, like, there's no reason that, like, I yeah. like the Batu stuff, and it's cool, especially when you're in Oga's Cantina, because they have references from the book in, t- in the Cantina in person, which is really cool. That's cool. Um, yeah. But they didn't need to do that. <laughs> they were already writing no. Star Wars Galaxy's no. Edge books. 
And I think that's the interesting, not interesting thing. I think that's what I mean by he's biding time. Like he was given, Thrawn came back in canon in Rebels. It was really interesting. Everyone was excited for it. It was awesome that they got Zahn, Timothy Zahn back to write the books. He's like, you know, the sort of curator of, of what Thrawn does. Um, he wrote those books. But yeah, not a, like, that's why I'm hoping it's setting up that villain. Like you get the setup that they are a massive villain. And the reason he joins the Empire is because they need the Empire's help eventually to defeat this new species that the Ascendancy is fighting as well. And I'm hoping with the Empire gone, Thrawn surviving, and then we obviously get the reference in Mandalorian to where is he, but he's obviously still in charge of things because that woman that Ahsoka fights no, no, must know where he is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he's, he's, I'm really he's very much I'm really still around, right? Threads into something. He's got to be yeah. still around. I'm really because... hoping that threads into something. Yeah. Um, I think he would make a great, especially without the, he's not a, he's not a villain. He's an opportunist. Um, he's he's he he's he's a smart guy and he wants the best for his people for the ascendancy. Uh, and so I'm kind of hoping they paint him in this weird grayer light when we see him again. Like you know he's not trying to corrupt Ezra. They're just trying to like he's just trying to save his people. And I kind of hope we get this weird alliance. Yeah, I think when we do see him again, you're going to see him and Ezra are going to be fairly close. And I think that they're going to yeah. have spent enough time together. To where Ezra sees what he's doing and understands it and kind of is with him on it. That's that's what I've thought from the jump. That that uh, yeah that was gonna he, basically you're gonna get Stockholm syndrome, Ezra. Yeah, but then yeah, but then of course I'm like, well, I don't know. It depends how they write through and what happens. We're definitely getting him in live action at some point. It's definitely coming up. I don't know when. Um, a lot of people think they're going to do like a Rebels sequel in live action, and I don't think it's going to be anything like that. I think we might get a spiritual successor to Rebels, as in like it's a it's a TV show with Ahsoka and Thrawn in, and maybe other Rebels characters. See, and think, Ezra, obviously. I think you're going to get but that I in the don't Ahsoka think, show. I think to cool. I think that's what I think that's what the Ahsoka show is no. going to be. Yeah. See, that's the debate, isn't it? Because some people think. It's going to be like her looking for him, but they've also said that the, this the Ahsoka show is going to cross over with Range of the New Republic, Mandalorian, and maybe Book of Boba Fett, and then cultivate in one big um, crossover event. I, Which makes me think that the Ahsoka thing is going to be Mandalore based. Really? See, I I would I wouldn't. See, I'm, I'm trying to think. Would there be a reason that Thrawn would want to take over Mandalore? Yeah, that's a good point. And they haven't really elaborated on what's hap happening on Mandalore. It's very like that's why oh, I'm oh, I, oh, 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 like with Mandalore. We need to who? Right. I I I'm like I don't know. It's so it's the Ahsoka thing. The reason I think that it's gonna be her looking for Ezra is because that's the only real reason she was there on that I forget the name of the planet. She was looking she's still looking for him. True. And I think that would be like a that, good that, that you know, that's a good them, launching yeah. point from that point on is to go like, okay, remember that thing yeah. in the Mandalorian? Boom. So then it's already tied in. And then if you want to bring in the new Republic, True. she's looking for him and then they're like also going to stop or help him or recruit Thrawn. I think it'd be interesting to see Thrawn with the New Republic because, like you said, he's an opportunist. He's not going to be like... like I, would even, I don't even know if he knows if the Empire's gone. Yeah, he probably doesn't. But he also probably doesn't. He doesn't care. He wants... Yeah, okay, to, cool. So I the, think his big motivation to, the next to thing. fight the Grisk. Yeah, move on to the next thing. If, yeah. you can, if you can help me, I can help you. So I think that would be, that would be interesting. Yeah. Which I think, yeah. Yeah, and I and I, I really you're right though. There's a good chance the Ahsoka thing will be that. Well, because that Thrawn name drop in that episode of The Mandalorian was literally the actual biggest surprise of the episode for me. Obviously, I was super excited to see her, but we knew it was coming. Yeah, I love the bits. I love we got the Gro. Well, I love we got Grogu's name. Mm -hmm. We got we didn't have to call him Baby Yoda anymore or the child. We got an actual name. Um, I love their connection. I loved everything about that episode. But the thing that genuinely surprised me was when she said, "Where is Thrawn?" I was like, "Oh my god!" Like yeah. that's like. That's, That's huge. A, an actual good Easter egg or plot point or whatever you want to call it. Um, and you're right. They're probably picking up in the Ahsoka series. There's, that would be yeah. what that, – if, I don't know. if I'm talk, in control, that's, yeah. what I, that's how I would do it because, like, that just 
it would it would be what people want. It would it would, it would continue the yeah. rebel storyline well, yeah. without having to do a live action rebel show, but still having the characters in it. No, exactly. The other talk is that they will get to that eventually. Ahsoka will be about the Mandalore stuff, the crossover stuff, whatever. But the, the Ahsoka is technically set before the end of Rebels. So you know when they jump forward in the final scene in Rebels where like she's got the white cloak and then Sabine walks up and they fly off? Yeah. That that is technically set after the Ahsoka series when they find it. Because she's still looking for Thrawn and Ezra. And, but that scene is the one where they finally get together and fly off to go get him because they now know where he is. Gotcha. Okay. That's cool. So there's, you know, so like Rebels ends and then we do a jump forward to that scene and in between that is all this stuff. We don't know how long after Return of the Jedi that future scene was at the end of Rebels. Interesting. Yeah. It's, there's so it's many things they could do. So many things. That's so a, many things. That's the thing. And it's... Yeah. It's and that, that's why I like it too. Like you're saying, like they feel like I don't know if you said this on the podcast or if you were saying it before we started, but uh, when there's like eight billion other like eight billion futures that they could like you, uh, Doctor Strange, like you could see fourteen million options, and it's so interesting to see how yeah. they choose these. Like I feel like they choose wrong a lot of time <laughs> with what's interesting. I see that happen a lot in the books where they'll say something and you're like, oh, chase chase that, and then they don't, and you're like. Well, why'd you even bring it up? Yeah. <laughs> that's also just us with our obsessive like fandom, though. You know, that's yeah. us being like analyzing all the plots, being like, oh, it's us <laughs> doing the WandaVision thing where yeah. you kind of like, you've like over speculated. You've over speculated. Yeah. Speculate all over yourself. It's, uh, um, it's speculation gets sticky. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Pre- premature speculation is a thing. Premature speculation. That was a See, bit- see, I- see it. See you, Doctor. I think that was why a lot of people didn't like Last Jedi, to be perfectly honest with you. I think people spent two years going, we're going to see Luke Skywalker. Oh, yeah. And then it's not what you expect, yeah. and then everyone just gets bumped out. But I think that it makes, like, I've had, I've, we've talked about this all the time on, on, on the show, and I, th- I think you and me have talked about it as well, too, when you were here. But all Ryan Johnson could do was what was handed to him. You know, he got handed Luke's on a cliff and went away. And you have to find out yep. why he went away. So something had to happen that was traumatic enough for him to dip out. For Luke Skywalker to be like, I'm done. And I think, I think they portrayed that very yep. well in, in the films. Now, they have contradicted yep. themselves. And me and Evan are going to do a show this week of talking about this. And I'd love to get your take on it, too. Uh, in The Last Jedi, he says, I destroyed Luke's temple. But in the Kylo Ren comic book, the Knights of Ren are the ones mm-hmm. that destroy the temple. So do you think it is a – well, here, there's, al- there's always the discussion we have. There's two things. It's either a it's, – it's both things, right? So in the story, I think he's just flexing to make Ray like, damn, you are a badass. But it's, it's clearly an oversight in writing because – in in our in in the rea- in reality, it's something that was said because that's what Ryan Johnson meant at the time. Yes, he destroyed the temple. Then you have a spinoff comic book where a writer's like, "Well, from a certain point of view, he destroyed the temple." Do you yeah. do you think it is him flexing, or do you think that it was intended for him to have destroyed the temple, and they just kind of retcon that because they wanted to do something different with it? We don't know who destroyed the temple, though, do we? Because he wakes up with the temple destroyed. Have you read the Rise right? of Kylo Ren? Yeah, but he, we don't know that the temple's destroyed because he wakes up after force pushing Luke away and Luke's disappeared. And they reference specifically, don't they, that like he doesn't know why the place is devastated as much as it is. I'm pretty sure they say that... Ah, I need to go get it. I think I have it over there. I'm pretty sure that the knights, that the Knight of Ren, like the guy, says... I forget, his name is Ren, I guess... Uh, I've, 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 only read, I've only read the book once. Um, it says that he destroyed it, right? No, I, do, I don't think so. I think that's... A, I'm going to look it up now, cause, but I think that's the big thing, is that those three Padwans think that he's destroyed the temple. He's confused, leaves in a sort of hurry, and they, they follow him. And then it depends on... See, I actually really enjoyed that comic book, and it was a really good characterization for the Kylo Ren that redeems himself as Ben Solo at the end of Rise of Skywalker. But I think it's that interesting thing, yeah, because it, I 
I think personally, I think JJ Abrams is sort of responsible for this. So you know what I mean? Like, I don't like to be Ryan Johnson because I think Ryan Johnson's had too much flack for what he did, and I don't think Last Jedi is perfect. I, think I no, wouldn't have either. said it directly after Force Awakens. I wouldn't but either. I, we've talked, I think JJ Abrams a forced times. him to do that. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, JJ Abrams <laughs> forced him to do that because it. Um, no, so yeah, Force Awakens. I've said this before. Force Awakens is the only Star Wars film with a cliffhanger that you have to address straight away. Yes. None of the other films have cliffhangers no, like that. Because they you, all have like, oh, I wonder what'll happen. Yeah, you can't have that imagery of her finding Luke, handing him the lightsaber, and then be like, okay, four years later, like that wouldn't work. Four years later. Now, now, do I think Ryan should have taken? Do I think Ryan? Do I think Ryan should have gone? I'm gonna do. No, but then it doesn't work, because then you're like, okay, well, we're going to have a 10-minute scene with them talking. But then he has to agree, to agree to train her for them to jump forward and her be trained more. Otherwise, your other option is you jump forward straight ahead and don't address it, and then maybe do flashbacks during the film about what happened at the end. It's it, it, it's messy to do it either way. Yeah. Um, and considering that the point is that he doesn't want to train her because he's failed, you can't have that happen four years afterwards. And unless you want to, it, yeah, I think J.J. Abrams really screwed the pooch on that one. I think that's the I biggest mess up in Star yeah. Wars. I, I really do. Having, yeah, like I think the movie yeah. should have ended with her blasting off to find him, and not necessarily. Yeah, definitely. It's a cool cliffhanger if you watch that movie in a vacuum, but when you when you pick it up yeah. immediately afterwards, because like if you think about it too, like. It's not just that, right? Like they're literally fleeing from the first order because they just destroyed Star Killer Base. So there's action from yeah. the from the jump on both sides. It's almost I like I like that when a movie kicks off like sets the tone like this is gonna be intense. But the last Jedi isn't that. So when like it's a slow burn of a movie once you get into it. Like the whole plot yeah. is like the ship's running out of fuel. But to have this like go, 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 yeah. go, 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 and then like completely stop. Is a very strange choice, which I I don't I don't hate it. Yeah, definitely. but it, it, it's a it's an odd thing to set a tone and then just be like, all right, just kidding. It's going to be a pretty slow movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we like, we're going to slow it down, you know. And of course, every time the Last Jedi comes up, everyone always brings up like, oh, but like, how stupid was the casino scene? And it's like the casino scene totaled about sixteen minutes. Yeah, it's not the whole maybe movie. even twelve minutes, something like that. So I added it up, and it's actually a very very brief side plot. I'm not saying it's relevant. I, it was great for the characters. I think it really it, it, it does so much for for Finn as a character. Like he it, like him becoming an actual general because of that was a was a totally natural expansion of what happened after Force Awakens, mm -hmm. where JJ doesn't address the fact that that Finn spent the entire movie trying to leave, and yeah. then all of a sudden he wants to stay. And Episode Eight, considering again Episode Eight happens ten minutes after Episode Seven, it's like a continuation of. Of that, yeah, because that's how he meets Rose. He was about to dip out. Yeah, exactly. So it's I, I, Rose I, is great. I love um, always defend I love the Last Jedi. We all know this. I'm I'm a huge dork for it, but yeah, yeah I could talk about it all day. So to answer your earlier question, I don't know if it's a contradiction. Contradiction. Charles Soule has done does an interesting thing with that comic book that I kind of like, and that he sort of harshens the bows of what is said in Episode Seven. Um, and even a little bit in episode eight of being like, he murdered all the students and he did all this and he did this and he did this. It kind of pulls that back a little bit. Um, and he's like, well, he's also a conflicted person that was kind of forced into this situation and no one believed him. And then he had to kind of be bad. And I kind of liked that. Um, but it's, as I've said before, I think all of this makes more sense if Ben Solo survives Rise of Skywalker and him dying in the Rise of Skywalker is like the worst decision in all of star wars in my opinion that's my big take that's my big take the worst decision of all, in all of star wars ever is having ben solo die at the end of rise of skywalker because it thematically invalidates a lot of people's efforts in the sequel trilogy i've i've heard people say give the same argument about palpatine coming back that it negates vader's decision i agree with you because you you gave me a scenario i don't know if you want to talk about it again but you gave me a scenario before we started yeah. the podcast, and I was like, oh, I like that better than what we got. But I feel like the choices still are the choices. Like, the outcome of the choice doesn't negate the choice. Like, no, Vader, Vader's no, choice no. to throw Palpatine over the thing d isn't negated. For, I mean, for, I'm sure for some people it is, but for me it isn't negated in the sense that he comes, that Palpatine comes back in 9. 
We still don't really know how he comes back. Fortnite's involved. I don't know. But <laughs> but, but they I, also get 30 years of peace. You know, they get 30 plus years where the galaxy's not a total war ruled by a fascist dictatorship. Like, surely that means that Sorry that it wasn't forever. I understand that Palpatine does come back. but he do- And then, again, you can make this argument as well. He doesn't come back in any meaningful way. He comes back in, like, the sense... And, again, that was where the sequel trilogy both, like, wants to... I don't know, it wants to have its cake and eat it, but also doesn't do anything with its cake. Yeah. In that it's, like, it's this big... They've got weapon killers, and there's always weapon killers for J.J. Abrams. There's planet <laughs> killers, and it's this and this and this and this. But then, of course, at the same time, the First Order are not a legitimate threat in the first one. They are a small insurgency terrorist group that then have a super weapon, destroy all those Posnian Prime planets, and then they're a threat in 8 from the Resistance, But and then they're starting to overtake, and then in 9 we're, we're replaced by the Final Order because Palpatine's back and is now enacting, because he was always in charge of the First Order, but now has more ships and they're going to take over the galaxy but that's stopped and there's only a year of there's only yeah. a year, this all takes place over the Leave, space of a year yeah, so weird. there's really only a year from the first order like coming out and being like we are the worst to them being shut down so really they are not they are nowhere close to the return of the empire you know you you could say oh, it invalidates vader's decision or invalidates it out of an eternity of years after Vader dies, it's invalidated for one year, and then we're back to the status quo. <laughs> yeah, right. That's so funny. You know? Yeah. It's not It's not invalidated for that long, and his sacrifice still means things. So does Luke's choice. That's a personal choice, all that kind of stuff. But what I was saying before, yeah, I, I'm happy to yeah explain it again. The Ben Solo dying, I think, kind of just makes all the other choices less valid, because for Ben Solo, Han died and willingly died um, trying to save his son um, and also like almost getting rid of some of his conflict. Luke sacrifice has made a mistake. And he, that's all it's about the fact that he's the fallen hero. He redeems himself to save the resistance. He doesn't necessarily forgive himself, but he understands that he can't just sit out from it. We could write a whole essay on his decision to be the most uh, like Jedi ever and not use actual conflict to save the resistance. He dies knowing he'd made a mistake and then in the final one, we also get uh, Leia, you know, dies to, like, give Rey a chance to, to survive, to then save Ben, which is what brings about Ben's redemption. The fact that she he that Rey beats him because he's distracted by his mother passing away, and then she heals him. And in, in that moment, you know, his mother's death and the healing of from Rey, the, the act of kindness, he realises his wrongs. Um and he sort of has the conversation in his head with his with his dad, with Han, and then he throws the lightsaber away, boom, light side. And all of that is really powerful. But then to have him die, I think, not invalidates it, but just makes it a little like, right, well, he, all these people that have made mistakes, you know, if he survives the end conflict, they defeat Palpatine, Kylo Ren is dead and Ben Solo is alive. He doesn't have to be redeemed. They don't need to walk him into the resistance base and be like, hey, he's a good guy now. Forgive him, everyone. That shouldn't have happened at all. Ray, he should have been, he should have like escaped at the last second or they should have written something in that Ray went back to the celebration scenes. And then when she's at Tatooine at the end, burying, burying the lightsabers, he appears. And there's that final conversation of him being like, I can't be forgiven. I have, there's no redemption for me because I've committed so many war crimes. So many war crimes. And she goes like, yeah, but like you know, but like you need to be. There's so many war crimes. I want someone to it's animate so this. I want someone to animate this and just use your voice for both the characters. And it's like, yeah, yeah. But then, but then her going like, well, you don't. You, you might never earn redemption. You might never be absolved of your sins. But you can start now until the day you die. And he goes, cool, I need to go find myself, I need to go do some good, I need to redeem the Skywalker name, the Solo name, the whatever. He could say anything, it doesn't really matter at this point. Walk And, you know, total fan, like, you know, shooting it now, fan casting or fan speculation. Well, he can just walk off into the Tatooine desert, drop his Kylo Ren helmet on the floor, and we get, like, the, the sand starting to cover it up. She buries the lightsabers, she has, takes on the Skywalker name. He's a Solo, she's a Skywalker, and they sort of both part ways or she says i'll try and help you redeem or you know what i mean like for a, 
J.J. Abrams does a weird thing in that he gets to end the trilogy of trilogies and doesn't actually set the future up at all. And I understand that that's the ending, but there's no... Bl- it's very unspoken. It's like, oh, celebrations, and I've buried the things, and, and here we go for the future. Well, what is the future? I don't I know think it's there's going to gonna decide, be one, but... really. I don't, I don't think Disney wanted him to set up anything, because I think that they were... Maybe not. Maybe you're right. But I, I, yeah. you're, you're 100% right. No, you, you do make I think point. they but were like, I don't even him... nod to anything, because I think we're done with this. I think, you know, it made the... the, the 789 made them a ton of money, but there was a lot of backlash deserved or not you know that's up to your opinion on if you like the yeah. movies or not i think some of it's warranted um more so for nine i think than any of the other films but yeah i think bringing abrams back was a mistake i think they should have just gone with a third director okay i understand why it wasn't colin trevaro um and his jewel of the fate script had some real high points and apparently i haven't read it some real low points i um, i didn't like it i've they, they've actually I, i'll send you the link i don't know you may have seen it already but there was somebody who like did a comic book for it. Oh yeah, I did see yeah. that. Yeah, someone was like making it. Wasn't it's they? Yeah. long. I'll have, to, in... I'll have to find the link. I mean, yeah. it's 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 a it's okay. a full ass like read. graphic novel, but yeah. it's it's interesting to see. I know there's I some real like cool it. stuff. Like some some Coruscant, Coruscant stuff is cool. Apparently, Finn's arc is awesome in it. There is some good stuff, but apparently, there's some real weird stuff. It was um, it was strange. Anyway, I think they sh- they should have pushed the delay back. They should have pushed it back a year. The release date. And gotten a different director, a yep. new one, fresh blood in. Um, anyway, Ben Solo surviving means that when they look on Tatooine and you see the go- Force Ghosts, Luke has redeemed himself. The, the man that he, he was the catalyst that changed, his fear changed Ben into Kylo. And through his actions, through saving Leia, who then saved Ray, who saved Ben, he has brought him back to the light side. His actions are redeemed. Han dies knowing that his son can be redeemed, is, and gets to live this life. And Leia died saving her son and her like surrogate daughter, I suppose, or protege in Rey. And they both live and get to build a better future. I think it just it works better. And I think I, this is what I mentioned before we started recording. The fact that they've only known Ray doesn't always sit well with me. Like, Ray is an amazing character, but then her taking on all these mantles and they've only known her a year is, I think, a little insulting to reality, maybe? Is that the right way to put it? Just that weird yeah. thing of, like, oh, like, yeah, it's fine. It's fine that my son died. You're my, you know, I've known you a year, so that's cool. Like, it's <laughs> I, fine I've that, always, like, my I nephew was thinking died. About but, this. Like, y- I was thinking about this when you brought this up before. But don't they say that they knew that she was a Palpatine? Have they been like keeping tabs on this on this girl for a while? I don't think so. No, it doesn't seem like they knew. I don't know. Luke kind of seems to act like he knows, but by that point he's a Force ghost, so like he knows a lot more. By that, you know, you, lo- yeah. you know all of the Force kind of thing. I um, yeah, I think it just would have sat better with me if that had happened. Otherwise, at this point, it just puts a JJ Abrams has a weird obsession with Ray. Um, in terms of like the mantles she has, so by the end of this film, she's like all the solos, all the Skywalkers, all the Palpatines, all the Jedi, debatably all the Sith as well, um, and she's a third of the Resistance, split with Finn and um, Poe. It's a lot to take on, and it's a, it's it's almost too much of too much. Not pressure is not the right word. It's just too much of a mantle for one character. Um, I agree. To end the trilogy on. And I don't think she needs that. I think she's good in her own character. She doesn't need all these crazy titles. Um, but I think she should have ended it as a Skywalker, and then he should have been a Solo, and they should have like he should have just walked into the distance or gotten into a ship and flown off to go find himself. Um, I, I think, I think it right. just all would have sat better. I never considered that like you know, splitting off. I was always thinking like, well, he's going to come back. He would come back and and go into the resistance and be like, hey guys, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> but I never, considered, I never, con- <laughs> I never considered him just being like, yeah, I screwed up really bad and I can't really like, they're just, there's the, they just set up like so much stuff that doesn't get resolved. Like, no, you don't like, when did we even find out that Ben finds out that Vader's his grandfather? Like there's none of that mentioned at all. I mean, the galaxy at large finds yeah. well, out that happens, Bloodline. That happens, that happens in Bloodline. Well, well actually, Bloodline, doesn't, doesn't. you don't see him find out. Yeah, you, just, yeah, you see him assumed, potentially he could find out. Yeah, 
because the, the galaxy finds out that she's related yeah. to Vader, but that doesn't necessarily yeah. mean he did because he's, again, the he's Va- with Luke. The Vader and... stuff is never how yeah. to get the, the helmet. Vader like there's so resolved. much crap that never just gets yeah. brought up. Like there's just which ag- and again like Chuck Wendig kind of did like his like it's paid off quite well for him in terms of like his canon, but his like the aftermath trilogy, which was mixed, it was good, but also not also. It's sometimes it was great, sometimes it wasn't. Long, man. Um, <laughs> it's long. I don't think I like it as a direct sequel to the original trilogy. I think it could have again could have been better, but it's not terrible. It's no, got it's some not, high it's points. Not bad. There's good. Anyway. Yeah. Um there is that weird point of being like he's got that's what, he's got all the short stories, doesn't he? Like yes. in that's between chapters, Vanth there's always from. a short chapter. And and that's where God Math comes yep. from. He's paid off. There's also one where he potentially uh one of the stories is about buying Vader's helmet. The, and the talk in, they have plausible deniability because they these creepy people sell it in the uh in the short story and then the ending of the story is literally like a cop out because it's like wait is that actually was that actually his helmet and it was like and they're like uh uh-huh, uh-huh. but we sold it yep it's so much <laughs> Might have been, random stuff but like so that. which is what kind of was what wendig was doing with all those short stories there's kind of like some will pay off some won't and he's actually like he actually hit the money i think on what happens in rise of skywalker in a few of them so like he he actually like almost like it makes it look like they knew like it was pre-planned which it wasn't um but i think the what was i saying about it what was my original point stuff not paying off what was my original point Stuff not paying off. Some of it. The yeah. Vader, so just the oh, that's stuff. it, right? So they made so the, the the Vader helmet. The Vader helmet was in the trailer for Force Awakens. It's a really big deal when he's like, you know, staring at it and it's like speaking to him, like in it, like through the Force. And we get that talk of him being driven, like he's using the the helmet essentially to make sure he stays on the dark side because he's. And I loved this in Force Awakens. I remember when I like, even though I put Force Awakens as my last or second to last favorite Star Wars movie now, it's it's gone way down for me. Um, when I first saw it, I really enjoyed it. And I loved that idea of the switching it up where it's like, they're not drawn to the dark side. He's drawn to the light side, but wants to be on the dark side. And none of that's really picked up again. Also the fact that like, we find out just in a throwaway sentence that Palpatine was pretending to be Vader in his head, but then we never get like Kylo or Ben, I should say, his exploration of the fact that, oh, but Anakin was a good man. And, and, and he, and he, and he turned like, that's the thing for me. It's like, Luke never mentioned that. Like, you, how does that not yeah. come up? It's family. That's his dad. That's his like. Yeah. I I, I don't I yeah. don't I don't get it. There's so much stuff that they could have just like explained and like even in like, for me like yeah. I know for I know for me because I read all the comics. I'll catch it if if it if it is explained because I do read all this stuff. But they shouldn't yeah, have to put that kind of thing in a comic book. That should be something that is yeah. that is Which- blatantly said for people who are who know Vader. I mean, they, they brought the helmet back in Episode Nine. That's in the little drawer thing that he has. Like, wh- they brought what back in nine? Sorry, Vader's helmet. It was in nine too. It's almost, oh yeah, it's yeah, al- yeah, it's, al- yeah. it's yeah. almost like they just like yeah. they find these little pieces of concept art and just kind of run with an idea without really thinking it through. Well, that's Abrams. That is Abrams through and through. Yeah. He, like the Force Awakens is the most un- unthought through movie out of all of them. Like Rise of Skywalker maybe is up there, but it's got. He's obsessed with like not mentioning the prequels. He's, you know, ab- afraid of. I think doing that came from. I think that came from Disney people, too, though. Apparently, I think that did. I think that was a thing. Yeah, we, or like, people didn't like the prequels, so like let's just ignore them. Force Awakens is non. Is I think the more I watch, yeah, not Force Awakens is nonsensical, really, as well. It makes no sense. To, even in a vacuum, they don't really explain anything. It's like, oh, the Resistance are here because the New Republic are real, but they won't legitimize. The, they won't fight, so we have the resistance fighting the First Order, who aren't the Empire, and the First Order are mad because they know the New Republic is being secretly is supporting the the resistance. It's so like, it's so like made up. If that makes sense, yeah. like for a fictional universe, it's just I like think it, I think it, it makes it sense hold only if you see the other Star Wars movies because you get the imagery of what a stormtrooper is. You get that it's good and bad, but yeah, I, yeah. I like The Force Awakens. I always have. I have I have very little issue with the sequels. I, for me, a lot of it comes from The Rise of Skywalker, which I still really, really, really enjoy. 
And they're like, dude, the highs in that movie are just so good. Like, I love the tat- yeah. I love oh, the Tatooine thing. Highs. I love the Tatooine thing where she buries the lightsabers. It's just it, that wraps oh, yeah. it up for me Beautiful. a little bit. But there's just things that they need to explain, and I think that's fair. I think I think if uh, you're not screaming and yelling online, but you hate everything, and, and eventually, I think a lot of the stuff that we that we want to see, we'll eventually see in some way. They they've done a pretty good job of like of explaining things away in other supplemental material but i don't know man i it's just it, for me it's like i kind of look at star wars i think i've told you this i just look at it like a history book and so like okay that's what happened i you don't have to like it all but it's just kind of no, it's just no. kind of how i look at star wars like there's there's you can always go well this would have been better or this would have been cooler oh, but yeah. it might not have been like sometimes the idea is not as good as the execution like Remember when you were a kid and, and you hear Obi Wan talk have about like, oh like yeah you hear Obi Wan talk about the Clone Wars and stuff and then you see Attack of the Clones and you're just like well that wasn't that wasn't great <laughs> yeah you're and like, like and uh, yeah. we got the Clone Wars show later but like at the time that was kind of it and I remember being like this is going to be awesome and it wasn't good so like there's things that come off good in concept and then execution's bad and then there's execution that's bad and but the concept was great. Did I, say, did I say that right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, vice versa. Maybe. If I, I don't know if I said that right. I get what right you mean. Not. Yeah, but vice yeah. versa. Vice yeah, versa. Yeah, yeah. So like there's it's it, it, yeah. it just depends on how it's on how it's done. And I think a lot of the if you go back and look at the original art of book for The Force Awakens, there's a lot of stuff where you go like this was a a lot of the story set up for episode nine was just image based. Like how would this look on screen? Which I guess you kind of yeah. have to do to some point because it is a movie and it is a visual medium. But story should trump all. And I feel like they should have learned that lesson from the prequels. Mm-hmm. And and they should have done it from the jump. They should have written, they should have gotten, I think you're right, three different directors. You get J.J. Abrams to set it up because he's a sci-fi guy. You get Ryan Johnson to do the middle darker story. And then you get someone else to do the finale. I don't know who it would be. Uh I like the guy who did Wolverine, or uh, not Wolverine, yeah. Lo- uh, Logan. James Mangold. James Mangold. I think he would have been a good choice for it. Just wrap it up. Yeah. It's a, it's, yeah. A, he's, it's a mid, you know, there's some dark stuff to it. There's some lighter stuff to it. Uh, I think he would have been a good director for the ending of it. But I think I think you just needed someone to just come in and neatly wrap it with a bow and just be like, boom. It could have been, it could have been as good as Endgame was, but it just wasn't quite there. No, I, and that's my issue is that like Endgame is just like obviously people are starting to sort of pick it apart now a little bit, but it's been two years essentially of everyone being like it's so good and it is, and it, you know I rewatched it like a few weeks ago and I was like it's still so good and the highs are so high that I'm like you know like, there's so many moments that you watch the movie for like like oh this moment and this moment and this moment and this moment and I feel like the Rise of Skywalker doesn't really join together the nine films it ends off kind of what happened in the the sequel trilogy but it is in no way a culmination of those three of the saga and the three trilogies all coming together no i I think a big issue too that a lot of people uh, i have and then we'll wrap this up because i do got to get running um i i don't like the fact that you just assume that these three are all friends when she doesn't meet poe in person and like canonically we see him and like until the end of last jedi. last jedi so i mean they've they've known each other for a year like, yeah. like and i know you can become friends with with somebody in a year but like it just i don't know man there's just the more i watch the rise of skywalker it's so strange the more i enjoy the movie but the more i start picking it apart i'm like that just doesn't make any sense like it doesn't make any sense and i left yeah, the, the theater we, i left the, the, more th- I, am, so I left the yeah. theater of episode 9 going like i don't see how anyone could not like this and I still think it's it's yeah. good. It's it's just not. It's just some, there's when there, when there's something that you can pick apart like that. It's uh, doesn't make it bad because I because I like it. But it it's just like there was not much thought put into this. And I don't. I, I remember hearing Chris Terrio was writing it, and I was like, oh no, because he's done some stuff where I'm just like, ugh. I think he wrote yeah, like one of the Transformers like, uh. movies. And I was just like, I don't, I don't he's like. He's just not a good. Neither of them are good writers. No, Chris Terrio and um, JJ Abrams are not good writers. They are like, they should be doing their own shit, like fun 
sci-fi individual films, but they shouldn't be handling these massive IPs. I just don't think they've, they're just, they, especially not something that is niche and sequel based and connected as Star Wars. They yeah. shouldn't be doing it. It's See, I, just, think, I think JJ Abrams is, is a good rewrites. writer. Yeah. I think he's a good writer when he's doing yeah, I think his type, his, his style of writing. Oh, definitely. And his style, to, for me, doesn't yeah, translate yeah. to The Force Wiggins. I, I thought he did a really, really good job with the Star Trek movies. And that's why I got excited as a Star Wars fan. I was like, oh, cool. Who's going to do something? Because yeah. I, knew, I knew there's even interviews of him like, I'm not a Star Trek fan. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. And so when he, when he was announced to do it, I, and I, I like The Force Wiggins more than you, clearly. Um, but. <laughs> But yeah. uh, I still do like it, and there's so much cool, good stuff in there. I think I was more annoyed at where it set the universe up for the sequel trilogy yeah, than I think the actual I, film itself. I see that. It, it, there's too the film much... itself is actually quite good. Yeah, it's uh, it's 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 tricky. This whole I think they should have sat down with three individual directors and written it out from beginning to end, and oh, then yeah. been like, I don't care how you get to this point. That's the creative part. But by the end of the movie, this has to happen. And then in this movie, this has to happen. However you choose for it to happen, this has to happen. And then this is how we end it. I think that was the horrible, horrible decision to not do that. Yeah, and I'm so, uh, no, I think it's something we're going to be saying as fans for the next forever, being like, I can't believe they didn't plan it out. You know, we're going to, yeah. I think we're always going to go to that. I just don't but get like how I you don't before, plan it out. Gonna... Like that was, no, def- like, I don't know. How do you not plan it? Like. Like, yeah, they put. As you much know, you're making in... three movies. You've announced a trilogy. <laughs> right. You know, so like plan the trilogy out. Oh, I don't know. All right, man. Well, I got to wrap this up because I do I unfortunately have entering... to leave. Oh no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say, but I think we are entering a golden age of Star Wars, where I think we're getting essentially almost weekly Marvel content, and I think by next year, starting with end of this year with Book of Boba Fett, I think we'll be getting close to weekly Star Wars content, video wise, you know, live action. Oof. That's Can't gonna wait. be wild. That's going to be spicy. I can't wait. Yeah. Well, we'll have to have you on next week so we can talk more about the uh, D23 stuff. But because um, I want to get your can't takes wait. on that, I know that was like Love two to. months ago. But uh, <laughs> I still want to hear what you think because I don't know what you think. <laughs> so we'll have to we'll have to get you back on next week. So um, thanks for coming on, man. Where can everyone find you oh, yeah. over on internet no. and all stuff you're doing? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at new underscore Macca, M-A-C-C-A. I'll put most of my stuff on there. Otherwise, on Instagram, it's at new Macca, one word. Beautiful. Um, and check out Star Wars Newsnet. You do you do a lot of the, the comic stuff, which I love. Yes. So I'm on the sort of comics team, so I do comic reviews, write about that, the old article, odd editorial. So that's on Star Wars Newsnet. And then I also uh, host uh, co-host the podcast Movie News Network, on the Movie News Net site, which you should check out because we talk about all the new movie news. And then we also have bonus episodes where we're weekly uh, reviewing and talking about all the new Marvel content. So uh, all the MCU stuff. So we're just about to start Falcon and the Winter Soldier this weekend. I can't wait, dude. That's going to be sick. I'm, I am I think that's the show that I'm going to be, be so the most excited about for Marvel. Hells yeah. Could, do we, okay, because I'm, I'm, I'm a very casual Marvel fan. I, it's so funny because I grew up reading um, – like a ton of Marvel comics and Daredevil's my favorite. I've always mm. loved Daredevil. Where do Love we it. where does this take place in the MCU? Is this after Endgame? After Endgame. Okay. Um, I don't I didn't watch any trailer sure for they, it because I didn't I didn't want to see anything because yeah. we break down Star Wars no. stuff and then I we just We don't know I, how yeah, we don't know how long afterwards, but um but it's after Endgame. I imagine it would be a few months. Okay. Even up to a year. Cool. I'm excited, man. I, I want to hear what you think when you when you finally get to check that out. But uh, I love you. It's been yeah. good to hang out. We're, we need to we need to talk more. I we, love you too. We talk. We we message each other all the time. But like we we, we need we need to talk more. We do. like this because I I miss you. Yeah. Um. Once this pandemic's it's over, so dude, much. I love it so much. I do too. Once this pandemic's over, we need to get your butt back to the U.S. and we need to go to Galaxy's Edge and hang out. Mm-hmm. Let's make it happen. I, I still can't believe you yes. haven't done Rise of the Resistance. That's so wild yeah. to me. <laughs> I know. Oh. 2022. I also can't believe that it's almost been, and then I really will wrap this up because I'm getting yelled at by Holly. Um, <laughs> I can't believe that <laughs> celebration in Chicago was two friggin' years ago, man. That almost was one of the, my ago. highlights of my life. That was such a fun week. I know. God. Every time I look at photos of it, I'm just like, oh, it was so good. It was so much fun. 
I loved it so much. We're actually oh, going to such uh, Mavericks, such Mavericks. Uh, <laughs> we're actually going to a, tar- a Star Wars toy festival next weekend that they're having here in Florida. Oh, sick! And I'm like, I'm only going because I miss Celebration so much, and that was like so much fun just walking around the floor at Celebration, looking at all the old toys and stuff. Oh, so I just, re- I just want I want Celebration back so bad. I'm hoping the next when they announce it oh, again, yeah, that they won't, it won't be in L.A. It'll be in the U.K. So then we can just kind of everything all at once. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, that'd be amazing. That'd be awesome. Well, wherever wherever it is, I've sort of said to myself, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it to the next one. I'm we going gotta to do it, one. dude. That would be amazing. All right, thanks everyone for listening to the show, uh, Alex. Thanks again, man. It was uh, good to chat, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next show. Till then, may the force be with you always.